Hey there Dungeon Masters, Lark here with another episode of Boss Battle. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Stone Giant and how to make your Stone Giant the best battle ever. Alright, first things first, as usual, we're going to make this into a three phase fight and we're going to start off by giving the Stone Giant its maximum hit points. Now as always with the boss battle, our goal is to make this feel a little bit different from our typical fights with regular enemies. What we're going to have to do here is find some way to make this guy stand out. The three phase system is a great way to make that happen. And all we're going to be doing here is splitting this battle up where you're almost chasing the creature down. Now for whatever reason we have to get this thing, we're obviously going to be approaching its lair because it's a boss. Alright, let's get right to phase one. First piece of this. We're going to have you as the party members approaching the lair, and the stone giant is going to recognize this. You see a shape come up silhouetted over the mountain's top. A slight motion in the distance, and you hear uh, the sound of air being displaced. A hum becomes a whistle, becomes a sound of impending doom as a stone flies out of the sky and makes some saves. First thing, I'm going to have the stone giant launch some stones at the party. Now, you can have it throw stones, or you can have it roll stones down the mountain while the party is trying to climb. If you wanted to be mysterious about what the entity in the mountain is, you really don't even have to reveal that it is a stone giant yet. You can just say a shape creeps up from the top of the mountain. A massive shape. And then the avalanche happens. Or, you can don't even ignore the shape. The party has law in their perceptions. They don't even see it come up. They just hear the rocks tumbling down the side of the mountain and are forced to make a save. Phase 1 of combat is just saves. This is a great way to punch down the party a little bit, make them feel a little weak going in, without always having to have minions or small creatures to overwhelm and burn the party's resources. The mountain itself the lair can be one of the greatest enemies if the dungeon master uses it right. Are there chasms that have to be jumped? Are there rocks falling down? Are there shifting lands, uh, shifting stones that the party has to navigate through? These are all ways for the ranger to shine. These are ways for the party's abilities to shine. And it should never be fail and die in phase one of the combat. In this case, it should be fail and something bad happens. We burn a resource. Maybe if they get hit by a rock, that resource is hit points. And if your party's got a healer and they got a ton of healing potions and they're just re ready to drop Liamid's tiny hut and get a full heal, that's fine too. Let them do that, but find another thing to crush. Maybe as the boulder rolled down the hill and it crushed a party member, it crushed them into their armor. And as the party gets them out of their armor, the armor is no longer going to be effective. Maybe it takes a minus one. Maybe if somebody gets hit by a boulder, any glass objects they were carrying shatter from the impact. These are different ways you can burn resources without having to have combat be the only thing that hurts them. Because then really, you're just burning hit points, maybe ammo and a couple potions. There's other resources we can burn, and this is a great way to do it. Great example I once heard is a chasm opens in front of you, and as you run and jump across, uh, you roll a natural one. Oh, you fall and die. No, no, no. Instead, roll a natural one. You just make it to the other side by the tips of your fingertips, and all of a sudden the stone gives way, and as you're falling, you grab onto a vine, but you see your favorite hat fall into the precipice. Simple Indiana Jones situation, where a party's favorite item now falls into the hole because of that natural one. All right, let's get to phase two. Now, this could occur inside or outside of the mountain, depending on how you want the layer to work. If you want an internal dungeon, that's awesome. Have them reach the cave as you start phase two. Or if you want the whole thing to happen on the outside of the mountain, that works just as well. But phase two is when the giant's going to reveal that they are there and that they are one with the mountain. If you've read Volvo's Guide to Monsters, there's a cool little ability that they give into uh, giants. I think it's in Volvo's. It might be Storm King's Thunder. Either way, stone giants, canonically, can now meld into stone. They can become one with the rocks, and when they do so, they can come in and out freely. Which means, as the party is working their way through this dungeon, or over this mountain, whatever the case, you can have a hand oh, come out of the ground, try to grab them and pull them in. Or you can have it swap or sweep across a path to try and destroy them. A foot can come up and stomp on them. All these different options you have. Maybe even just the creatures... Stay. Maybe even just the creature's head comes up to interact with the party. Maybe some of them speak giant. That would be an awesome little event. And then sinks back down into the mountain. Now this gives an additional challenge 
as you're working your party through. Now as they're trying to make their saves against flying stones or jumping over chasms or moving shifting rocks, now we know who's moving the rocks. This hand comes up. Maybe as they're jumping from one pillar to the next, a foot comes out and sweeps and knocks the pillars down. This creates more epic, intense situations where the party feels they're not just fighting the environment now. They're fighting an environment controlled by a powerful entity. This is a great way to build drama, and if you feel that maybe the party should find some way to pull the creature out of the mountain, you can do so, or if they get too close to an ancient relic or a secret hidden cave, this is where the stone giant can no longer play in and out, no more play peekaboo, no more hide and seek. The stone giant fully reveals itself and begins the combat, but we don't just want to have party versus stone giant. That's a boring combat. When you get the one-on-one, -on -one, or not the one-on-one, -on -one, but the head-to-head -head when you get the head-to-head -head fights, you've got to make the stone giant interesting. Yes, it can fling party members. That's cool. It should do that every chance it gets. Yes, it can roll stones. If it makes space or the party tries to back out, it should definitely do that. But what could it do to make this fight feel unique? A magic weapon in the hands of the stone giant, I feel, is a fantastic idea. And it could be something that you don't see so much of. A magic spear or maybe some sort of magic net. Give something a little bit varied for the stone giant to use. Maybe he uses his tools. Maybe his 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 uh, chisel is his tool. And that's what he uses to fight off the adventures. Maybe he doesn't plan on ever having to do combat, but he has a magic chisel he uses to carve awesome things across the mountain. You could have said this all in phase one, too. These awesome images that are all across the mountain that have been chiseled into place. Have that item be some sort of a magical tool that he can now use against the party. Maybe it's a returning... Uh, hammer that he uses it with the chisel. So he throws the party full and he comes back Thor's hammer style. This could be a great uh, this could be a great item that the party may want to gain by defeating the stone giant. And magic items in Dungeons and Dragons change size to match their wielder. So that makes it easy. If you have a system that doesn't do that, it might be a little trickier to make this hammer work. But either way, you've got some different things that you can work with here. The stone giant is not just an enemy. It's a magical one, and it has some ancient secrets and some ancient tools. Play with these ideas and add your own, them add your own thematically to make this feel epic. Again, once you finally get to face the creature head to head, you don't ever want it to just be, all right, well, you got through the trial of the mountain and you got through the hands coming out of the ground. So now he just stands there and he punches you as you punch him back and hit him with a fireball. There's so much more you can do with it. You can play with his mobility. You can cha play with the party's positioning. If you feel he's getting overwhelmed by barbarian and rogue attacks at close range, he can meld into the stone, give the party one round, and then he comes back on the other side, and now he is raring to go on this side. Play with positioning, play with magical items, and let the party find out what's the best way to handle the stone giants. For more tips and tricks like this, if you want to use more of those three-phase battles, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I'm DM Lark. I love doing this stuff with those of the Dragons. I love making videos for you. If you have an idea for a video, I do appreciate that. It does help me stay consistent because I know what you guys want to see. And that's about what I got. Good luck with your games. Let me know if you play this Stone Giant, if you use the three phases, and how it goes from there. All right, Dungeon Masters of the Internet, I will play you later.